In this video, courtesy of Network Rail Manchester Rail Operating Centre staff at the operations and signalling side, we take a look at the new Crew South workstation that will take over from Basford Hall, Salop Goods and Crew Sorting Sidings North. This will be based in the Manchester Rail Operating Centre, one of 12, and will control the West Coast Main Line all the way from Crewe through to Manchester Piccadilly eventually. This is based at Ashbury's in Manchester, and the top floor, which is being fitted out currently in November to December 2024, will take over the first of the workstations for Crewe South. Yes, this is the training room for the incoming crew projects. So at the moment we're doing an engineering work T3 on what is Basford Hall, which is going to be Crewe South workstation. Um, and then on the sim up here, we've also got the independent lines workstation, which is Salop Goods, which is the right hand screen, and then what is SS North on the left hand screen. So layout wise, this, this is Basford Hall Junction that you can see there. Yeah. That screen at the far end, is that just for the isolations? That is just for the isolations, and this is your engineering screen to put um, EPRs on for axle counters part of the project we've now got um, axle counters in the whole Basswood Hall area. Have you still kept any track circuits? Track circuits are only on the independent lines. Right. So as we go up onto the independent lines then the, all the independent lines are still track circuited. So you basically compressed the three signal boxes at there, Basswood Hall Junction, Sorting Sidings North and Salop Goods into this, this one location. Is it the one signaller that will be working, that three? Uh, no, one signaller works this panel, and then we've got one signaller who's working those two panels. Right, so they're two separate workstations. Two separate workstations. Um, man 24 hours a day, and that's in Manchester Rock. Yes. They'll be taking over. As regards the project, how, how easy has it been, or how hard has it been to get this? <laughs> uh, in terms of project, uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask. I've been working with the POIS, who is the Project Operation Inter Interface Specialist, which we've got two, one for the Manchester Rock side of the project coming in and one for the project on the ground. Um, so they've kind of given me loads of advice and kind of given me the methods of work. And as we've been training, we've been giving feedback. So as we've been discovering issues with the new methods of work, they've been taking that on board to change it. The same with Siemens who have done the same because this is a Siemens sim, not an Attachy sim. So again, we've been working with Siemens to discover issues. You could put axle count EPRs on the track circuits at one point on the sim. Yeah. Um, and there's issues with the signals not showing the correct aspect. So we've kind of- Working through it. Worked through it and, you know, and some of that's been then the interlocking has been interlocking issues as well that we've discovered yeah. while training on the sim. So that side has all been very good, but we're kind of confident in the training sign that everyone's going to be ready. How many years has this all been going now? Um, I only got brought onto the project six months ago to start training, but I think it's been two or three two years. Two or three years in the planning side. In the planning side, yeah. And it's coming in um, Christmas time, 2024? Yeah, New Year's Day. New Year's Day. And then the independent line is coming on the second or the third. And that's just so you can get the West Coast main line up and running, and at least you've got a backup plan then if something doesn't work, you can still run the freight through the main. Yeah. Work-wise, um, it was three signalers, now it's one signaler. So how do the signalers kind of do their work? Like, do they have relief or...? So they have relief, yeah. So it's going to be two signalers. It's going to be one signaler for this panel, one signaler for the other panel. Um, so there'll be three signals on duty within a 12-hour period, and one of those will be the meals. Yeah. So they'll then kind of give them a break every three hours. They'll get 90 minutes off the panel. Um, but what happens on kind of Westcad is signals kind of have one another. So if something is kicking off on this panel, uh -huh. and the independent line isn't too busy, the independent line may come over and assist to take phone calls or... Yes. So sig signaling... The, the, the ID plates and the signals haven't changed, it's just a recontrol? No, no, everything has changed. So all the signal numbers have uh, changed. So all the prefixes have changed and they're now kind of standard West Cab numbers. Right. So uh, beginning with three for the fast lines, five for the slow lines, um, one for ground position lights, sevens for coming off shunt yards or yards. 
So everything's kind of changed. All point numbers have changed. Right. I'm not sure about the lines. I think the lines have kind of changed names. Yes. Uh, but they're pretty close to what they were originally. So have you still, for instance, got the... I know spring points gone at sorting sidings now, but is that now a trap point, is it? Yeah, so we've got loads of trap points. So as we go into the yard, which was the old Bassett Hall yard, there's a number of trap points. Ah, yes. Coming in and out. Um, and then a lot of the kind of the hand points have been removed and have been replaced with signals and have been replaced with kind of controlled signals to get in and to leave the old siding. So that's the DRS compound. Um, we've got a number of slotted areas now uh, where crew have to request a slot for us to accept trains. Right, so that's similar to coal yard then. That's coal the yard, yeah. And one of the biggest things that have changed is the up independent has now become a bi-directional line. Ah. So we can now have DRS coming straight in on the up independent by die into crew coal sidings. Yes. Instead of having to come on the down slow down fast independent and then get across all like the I same say, work. They used to have to wait and wait, didn't they? Yeah, and do a weird shunt back. And so then all the yards now also have shunters releases as well. So the workstation's Westcad. Westcad. And it's yeah. just point and click? Point and click, it's really that simple. So it's as simple as click on the signal and the route comes in. So the white lights are the route. Um, red's obviously occupied for a train, the train yeah. description. Blue's around things. Blue is reminder appliances. So that kind of stops me from pulling a route. Yes. So if I put a reminder on this signal here, I can't physically set that move anymore. Right. I'd have to remind it override. He says. It's not that he did for some reason. <laughs> Right, yes, ah, you can see the signal aspects as well. As sound well, yes. Yeah. So, so everything is, you can see all the signal aspects, so it's full aspects. Yes. So you will actually see. The double yellows. Double yellows. Oh, yes, yes, you can see it just there, yes. Okay. So these are basically some shortcut screens you've got to just to drop straight onto your just screen. To drop straight on, yeah. So you have one on the keyboard as well. So all of these are replicated on the keyboard to do keyboard commands. But you can basically just select. A reminder, stick it on, and it's literally point and click. I could say, yeah. I like how that's been done with the um, the incoming from crew. Yeah. So when trains are ready to depart from crew and crew have set a load, it will come up with their head code and it will say whether it's coming on the fast or the slow. That's pretty similar to what they've got at to crew Collier at the moment with the yes. A and B tracks. Yeah. And it's the same with Edge Hill as well on Lime Street. I so think got it as well. on Lime Street, you can see what Edge Hill are doing, and Edge Hill can see what you are doing. So this is, is this a pretty standard layout for the workstations in the rock where you've just got your, your eight screens laid yeah. out? So on this is slightly different because the actual Westcad itself is only five screens. Right. Um, so these other three screens are kind of the back desk, so that's for the trainer. So I can simulate everything. I can simulate track circuit failures, signal failures to really give it a kind of, give the trainees a simulation really. Um, but yeah, you'd always have five screens on Westcad. One of them would be your general purpose display screen. Yeah. And that kind of gives you a heads up of if there's a signal failure, track circuit failure, uh, train describer alarms. And then you then have five, four other screens. Sometimes they could be filled with all panels. Yes. Uh, but we've only got actual one panel on here. So the other screens are taken up with engineering work, and the overhead screens for electrical. It does make a lot of sense because, it, like with, for example, Man South, where everything's overlaid together, it becomes really compact. That's that's nicely laid out. Yeah. So there you go. We would like to thank Manchester Network Rail Operating Centre, its staff, the signalling staff, and the operations staff for helping us make this video. 
and we'll finish off by showing you some of the memorabilia that the rail operating centre has managed to keep from the signal boxes over which it took hold of, including this permissive block instrument from Krug Resty Lane. <laughs> 